Hey everybody, it's Brett Fogel. I'm here at my trading desk and you've probably been seeing me talking a lot about Bitcoin and crypto recently and may have been hearing about this thing called the Bitcoin halving. So it's time to put on our Bitcoin hats and unpack this a little bit. Unfortunately, it's probably not what you think and it doesn't have to play out this time like it does all of the other times in the past. So let's jump on over to another screen and I'm gonna talk about this and what people are missing. Here's an article by Goldman Sachs on the Bitcoin halving. And if you're not familiar with what that means, it just means that programmatically every four years it cuts the amount of Bitcoin that can be mined by the miners and cuts the supply in half so thereby increasing demand. So there's some other factors though involved here and I don't think it's going to play out exactly as people think it's going to do. So uh, stick with me. I'm going to walk through it and uh, give you a little lesson on all this and maybe look at some other things as well and where the opportunities really will be. But uh, there, So most people are thinking it's going to play out the same way as every other time, but this article says other major factors will be giving greater influence on Bitcoin's future, you know, especially now with the ETFs that have come out. This has become almost like an, a Wall Street product a little bit more than in the past. And the article, uh, Goldman Sachs also cautions against reading too much into the past halvings, as I said and that uh, these tend to favorable uh, have a favorable effect on Bitcoin in the past. And certainly macro on the macro scale, they should less supply, higher demand. And another study, I have got 10 factors that could explode this market, like 10 small campfires that could ignite like a good old fashioned California forest fire if they all fire up at the same time. But because we've run up so fast ahead of the halving, I think we're going to see a little bit of a pullback as we're seeing right now and uh, probably uh, throughout the, the rest of the month and into May. So um, but after that, uh, many things are important to consider. Either way, it's a great time to be getting involved in crypto and uh, our company Moonstream Crypto has been teaching thousands of investors around the world for the past three years, uh, four years rather, and uh, how to navigate these tricky markets. And we certainly have an edge in doing that. So um, if you'd like to reach out, you can find more about us at moonstream.io. And I do want to tell you about a free training we're going to be doing here next Thursday that you can sign up for at moonstream.io slash free. If you want to learn more about this crypto stuff, even if you're a rank beginner or intermediate, and we've got something for everybody, so you can register for that at moonstream.io slash free. But back over to the article here, the uh, halving is maybe no longer a primary catalyst for the Bitcoin's bullish surge, it says. They're highlighting the factors such as increasing demand from large scale investors, so Wall Street institutions, hedge funds, and diminishing supply were now the key drivers of Bitcoin's upward momentum. And of course, we have CEOs of public companies like Michael Saylor buying hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin over and over and over again. So the supply is diminishing. And the overall overall theme of Bitcoin has always been up and to the right. It's the best performing asset class over the last decade since its inception. Nobody can argue that despite the volatility. So the big question is, is now the time? I think, you know, again, we're probably going to come back down a little bit um, or stay at these current levels at 60K and then push higher. I'll show you a, a diagram, a chart of how that could play out. But here at the end of the article says uh, inflation could have a significant influence on the upcoming halving event. And we talked a lot about this in our retire rich class earlier today about the impact of that. And in the long run, it'll be hugely bullish because we are printing so much debt and we'll have to print so much more debt just to keep the debt service alive that eventually they'll be forced to lower interest rates just to pay for our own interest on our own debt. And so not to get too far into it, but when that happens and they start dropping interest rates and quantitative easing, printing more money into the economy, as we saw in the last cycle after COVID, that makes the markets absolutely explode. Uh, in the near term, I'm not sure we're having some mixed signals from the Fed on is inflation in, in control? Do they need to drop? Do they need to maybe raise again probably they're going to drop three times this year and uh, we have an election cycle so they're going to keep the economy strong and so we're going to you know in the next month or two we'll certainly know what direction we're headed and into the end of the year i see much higher prices and i'll give you some targets on that as well for those interested so but here he's saying that we want to be careful of extrapolating past cycles and the impact of the having giving the perspective and prevailing macro conditions and unlike previous having cycles he says that the present economic conditions this is important on the prior havings there have been more favorable economic conditions than we have right now and so the present economic conditions display high inflationary pressures and interest rates so we know that the feds had a hard time getting interest rates down to that two percent level that they've been trying to hit 
they might have to just accept a higher baseline in the future and say, well, maybe it's 4% or 5%, so be it, and then they print money to pay that down. Probably the most likely scenario. Otherwise, they have to say, look, we can't pay for this, and the Republic failed. Uh, we're sorry, everybody, and start over, and nobody wants that. So the analysts have su suggested that for Bitcoin's historical having bull runs to occur, the macro conditions need to be supportive of investor risk-taking. And as we know, risk on assets do better in low interest rate and uh, uh, money being put into the uh, the economy. So whether it's tech stocks or crypto, that's the uh, the conditions that we need. So uh, basically, he's there saying that because of the inflationary pressures and interest rates, this could cause the 2024 Bitcoin having to this cycle to diverge from historical patterns. At least in the short term, I think that's true. Um, up up until the right is the motto of of the. Uh, the cycle and uh, this video, so it's um, certainly we think that'll happen. But the, currently, the United States faces challenges, high inflation, as we mentioned, current rates above five percent. Arguably, uh, true inflation has us down around two percent, and they track maybe in a more accurate basket. But then we get into that right here. The conditions may exert pressure on Bitcoin's market dynamics. However, this is the key. Despite the prevailing circumstances, we may see the digital currency as a formidable, uh, formidable inflation hedge and a beacon of hope against inflationary pressures in the future. And that's the key. And of course, we had Jamie, uh, not Jamie Dimon, but Larry Fink of the BlackRock company and the largest ETF out there finally coming out and saying that Bitcoin will be a flight to quality in, in terms of the inflationary environment and people getting out of fiat money, out of cash and into crypto. So that's uh, this is all good news for crypto. Here's a quick chart of Bitcoin. I did forecast we come back down into the 60K range and we dipped right down into the 60K just below 60K yesterday. A little bit of a bounce right here, but uh, I think, don't think we're going to push higher anytime soon. Uh, the reason for that is on the uh, monthly chart here on the total market cap, we can see, uh, which is similar to Bitcoin's, we don't want to see a big red candle here um, all the way down, but we do need to see a pullback because we've seen seven months of upward pressure on Bitcoin, which is really rare and actually the first time that we've seen that. So a breather uh, in this market uh, is needed. So I'll just turn off some of these lines and things that we're looking at, but it would make sense that uh, after this run up on this uh, on the monthly time frame, we should see a down month in April, I'm sorry, in May, um, and um, I'm sorry, a down month in April right now, the month we're in, and then uh, as soon as uh, we get into May, we could see that continue higher and break into new highs. So I do think that's uh, what we'll see, unless this candle is bigger than this one, a bearish engulfing candle, not to get into all this uh, trading technology and terminology, but that would be bad, and we could come down then and retest 50,000s. However, I do think that um, uh, the uh, total market cap has um, is showing us that uh, probably it will hold, and that's usually what I'm looking at for finding the tops, not Bitcoin itself, but the total market cap. Interestingly, it hit $3 trillion to the T. That was the total market top of the 2021 market cycle. And uh, we forecast that as well and was telling people to get out of the markets in January, December, actually as early as November, January uh, 2022. So we got that right. We also called the bottom right down here. I was telling people to get back into the markets January 2023 at the depths of the bear market around 16,500. And those of you who have been following me, I know that uh, we did that right back here. And so caught this massive run up here. So we've been really uh, nailing the markets and um, uh, know what we're doing, have an edge on all of this. Um, also want to look at the dollar index. This is, runs inversely to uh, Bitcoin. Dollar index up, Bitcoin and crypto down. So we had a surge in the dollar here recently for a variety of reasons. And uh, so that uh, may be temporary. I think we're hitting a uh, resistance area there. And as soon as this rolls over, we'll see that Bitcoin rally continue. However, we are in an uptrend. I wouldn't be surprised to see this push up the DXY up to this 107 level and then start to roll over down into Bitcoin rally zone. So so I'm looking at that to certainly into May and June. Summertime can be a little tricky, but as we go into September, October, November, much, much higher prices on Bitcoin and crypto. And if you'd like to see my targets on that, definitely join the free webinar. We'll be covering that next Thursday, a week from today at moonstream.io slash free and it is going to be a training we'll show uh, what we look for in cryptos that we like we're going to be giving out uh, our top trending crypto sector lists uh, with full of coins in those hot sectors the most money is made in crypto following certain narratives and in the past it was DeFi, it was meme coins it was nfts 
This cycle, it's going to be AI and it's going to be DPIN, decentralized physical infrastructure. What does that mean? Well, we talked about this uh, in today's classes as well. Uh, the other sector is going to be uh, real world assets, tokenization of real world assets, it's going to be a $16 trillion market. And that's basically turning traditional things like real estate paintings into tokenized products where everybody can buy in a little bit at a time. And uh, so that's going to be a very large space. But DPIN, decentralized physical infrastructure, that's that's where instead of having a, a company that owns all of the technology, it's decentralized. And so one of my favorite projects is something called uh, Helium Project, Helium Coin. Another one is called Filecoin. Filecoin competes with Amazon, AWS, their most profitable segment for cloud computing and uploading shared uh, cloud material into a decentralized kind of uh, structure. And so the reason for that is that uh, the, these companies, especially AI on the, on the blockchain, they don't want to have all their data stored on a centralized cloud storage like Amazon, where ostensibly somebody could make a call and make that data available. This is, uh, regardless, this is the trend, De deep in decentralized physical infrastructure. I've got a hot list of the um, top micro caps in this area. I won't go through all this. This is what we covered in our class today, just giving you a little bit of a review. And um, other exciting things happening in this industry, guys, that we unpack every week in live classes. Here we have the top low cap deep in coins for 2024. I've got a few different sources for these. And, uh, and again, Helium I mentioned, and they just launched a mobile service, just like Mint Mobile, but it's except instead of the big tower on the corner, it's bouncing off of these decentralized uh, Internet of Things um, powered um, nodes where basically I, I have a Helium miner in the corner. There's 368,000 of these of people just like you and me with the uh, the helium miner there and it's bouncing the data off of that and in fact creating a network a decentralized network so that they don't need the big cell phone towers and so helium uh, previously was going to power the internet of things your toaster your refrigerator the neighbor the uber going by and now they're getting into mobile so uh, these are huge industries obviously and there's a couple other in here that um, uh, we really like so anyway with that i didn't want to go too long and that just wanted to give everyone a heads up on what we're seeing and what we're doing over here at moonstream and uh, you can find out more about us at moonstream.io uh, certainly more and more people are becoming interested in crypto and bitcoin right now now is the best time and this pullback that we're having is an ideal opportunity to get into this market before the next big push higher and again i'll cover my targets they're quite a bit higher uh, over 150,000, i think for bitcoin this year and uh, considerably higher the year after i'll show you exactly why i think that's going to happen and very likely so if you have any interest at all if you've been hearing about bitcoin and crypto uh, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, but uh, join us. My business partner, Mike Newton, and I, he's been teaching and been in the space since 2014. And one of the smartest guys I know anywhere in crypto, he'll be on. I'll be talking and interviewing him, and we'll be looking at some of the things that we just talked about today and how you can really get involved in, uh, and have some help for finding the next hot cryptos as they come out. So anyway, go to moonstream.io slash free, and uh, if you have any questions, just put them down below in the chat, and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, take care.